Thanks for joining us on 9 News Plus. I'm Chris Bianchi. Car thefts are way up in Denver and across Colorado year over year, and especially over the last five years. But which cars are getting stolen the most, and what can you do to prevent your car from suffering a similar fate? We spoke with Skylar McKinley from AAA about how you can protect yourself from car thefts and what to do in case it happens to you. Skylar McKinley from AAA joins us to discuss specifically car thefts and prevention and perhaps also a bit more about why the Denver area has seen an uptick in those car thefts in re- recent months and frankly recent years. Um, Skylar, thanks so, first of all so much for joining us here on 9 News Plus. Um, I know that's a pretty broad ranging question, but before I get into some of those specifics, is there any specific reason why Denver has a higher rate of car thefts than other places? You know, the social determinants of crime are really complex. I mean, there have been thousands of sociology, psychology, criminology, political textbooks written about this sort of thing. When you look really, though, at why we're number one, you can sort of assess a couple different factors. Number one, just broadly, we tend to have a lot of the cars that tend to be the most stolen vehicles in the country. So repeatedly in the Colorado data, in the Denver data, you will see Ford F-150s on there. You will see Jeep Wranglers. You will see some of the SUVs, older models that are easily stolen or more easily stolen and tend to be popular in Colorado. Um, So to some extent, we have, in some cases, more easily stolen vehicles. When you get to the actual behavioral side of this, other factors. Look, Colorado has grown very quickly. Denver has skyrocketed in growth. Many folks in Denver are unable to park their vehicles indoors overnight. Many folks who are city dwellers may leave their car for a couple weeks at a time because they're just walking everywhere. Um, That increases the risk. I'd also say that car theft is downstream of a lot of the other economic problems we're grappling with. So there's no question that we have a homeless and housing affordability crisis. There is rising inflation and food affordability issues. Um, So folks might Uh, be inclined to steal a car because their backs are against the wall economically. Finally, uh, and this is where it gets a little bit unique to Colorado, um, you will hear a lot of folks say that we don't do enough to enforce our car theft laws. Um, I think there's some statistics out there that indicate 97% of people who are caught stealing a car have stolen one before. Uh, I'm not a criminologist. I'm not a public policymaker, but I do know there are some folks who say, look, the way that we treat car theft relates to the value of the vehicle. So if it's a relatively cheap car and like something like 85% of those stolen in Colorado are worth less than $25,000, 60% are worth less than $15,000. Um, if you steal a cheaper car, you're less likely to have serious criminal consequences. You might get tagged with a misdemeanor. Um, and so those are the cars increasingly that are stolen. Uh, they're the cars that are easiest to steal. Uh, and there are the cars that have the least amount of consequences if you do get caught stealing one. So a, a lot comes together. Uh, The final complex part of this is that we also sit at the crossroads of I-25 and I-70. We have a major urban area next to uh, rural areas uh, on the western slope and, of course, just adjacent in the eastern plains. Cars are stolen from Denver and taken all over the state to commit other crimes. They can be used and taken across the country very easily for other crimes. So uh, it's it's a lot coming together all at once. Wow, that's fascinating. And you specifically mentioned that Denver is indeed number one in terms of most cars stolen and uh, in, in the country. Is that correct? Yeah, Colorado's number one at an absolute level. Denver sort of jockeys for that pole position with Bakersfield on a per capita level. Hmm. Um, This was not always the case. I think since 2019, motor vehicle theft in Colorado has increased by 120%. Um, It's up in Denver, something like 40% over last year, which was a record year. So car theft has been going on in Colorado for a while, but us really taking that sort of sorry gold medal out of it uh, is, is a new phenomenon. Are there any specific neighborhoods in Denver that are being targeted? I, I, I apologize, that is a bit too specific, so don't worry if you can't answer that, but are there any specific neighborhoods where you're seeing these cars being stolen more than others? The number one neighborhood actually is well known, and it might surprise you because it's not a neighborhood at all. A number one location in Denver and across the state is Denver International Airport, where about three oh. percent of all statewide car thefts happen. So uh, that is number one, just because look, there's big parking lots, there's a lot of traffic going in and out. It's hard to know who's up to no good and and who's just going about their business. Um, I will say also from an equity standpoint, this is what's really frustrating. Um, Lower cost cars, cheaper cars are more likely to be stolen. These are also um, typically belong to folks who may only have one vehicle in their family. So it, it we we tend to see not a one to one, but generally where we see lower property values. Uh, higher concentration of renters um, and a lack of outdoor parking, we said, is, tend to see an increase. Again, it is an economic crime, and the victims of auto theft, um, unfortunately, tend to be 
the most disproportionately economically impacted. You mentioned at the beginning some of these cars, Ford F-150s amongst them, uh, Jeep Wranglers. Uh, what are those cars that are being specifically targeted and what can some of those owners do to try and prevent them, those cars from being stolen? Yeah, so I think the, the the common thread is that these tend to be older vehicles that don't have a lot of the countermeasures installed. So I can run down the list from July through September. Number one was the Kia Sportage. Number two was the Hyundai uh, Tucson. Three, the Hyundai Sonata. Four, the Chevy Silverado. Then you get Kia Optima, Hyundai Elantra, Kia Sorento, Ford F-250, GMC Sierra, and Kia Soul. Uh, specifically with this these Kia and Hyundai models, um, they don't have really uh, transponder keys or a lot of the anti-theft mechanisms. So they're, they're fairly easy to steal. Um, this is becoming frustrating for insurers in Colorado who say, like, look, these cars rolled off the line as affordable but very bare bones vehicles uh, that can be stolen easily. So we see that. But also when it comes to the Fords, the Chevy Silverados, these are just cars that were built to last and have been on the road for a while. Um, and so, uh, you know, there are there are programs through the city of Denver, some through the state of Colorado where if you've got one of these commonly stolen vehicles or if your vehicle has been stolen before, you can get anti-theft technology installed in it and that'll help. Um, and that can be a transponder key or other electrical countermeasures. I will also say in many cases, just one of those you know steering wheel locks that that go across the wheel of car work both as a deterrent and actually make it harder for your car to steal, to steal your car, I should say. So that might be the simplest one, right? So for a lot of owners, maybe just getting that club or whatever it is, the little stick on your steering wheel, uh, uh, I forget exactly, I'll admit, I should know exactly what they're called, but get one of those on your steering wheel. And then you mentioned some of those programs with the city. Um, any other final thoughts? Uh, if you have access to a garage, obviously you want to uh, put your car in there as well, I would imagine. Yeah. And you know, an ounce of preparation is worth a pound to cure. It's that old saying. So look, mm. uh, if you can park in well-lit areas, if you can park indoors, do, that's going to really limit your risk. Most cars are stolen uh, and, and taken elsewhere to commit a crime. And then they're usually returned. Um, the vast majority of stolen cars in Colorado are recovered. That doesn't make it any less frustrating. Uh, if if you can't park in a garage, if you live in the middle of the city um, and you park your car in the street, as I did for many, many, many years, um, don't just leave your car and get it the next time you have to drive. Check on that car periodically. Check on it daily. We, we have a rise in catalytic converter thefts as well. Um, so it, it behooves you to uh, start that vehicle. Uh, as then just to try it out. Um, and then I guess the, the final piece of advice on that would be, you know, common sense, right? So obviously park in well-lit areas, but don't leave valuables in your cars. Lock your car doors. There's survey data showing something like 60% of Americans, some say that they have gotten in the habit of not locking their car doors. Mm. That's not going to work in Denver. Um, make your car uh, as unattractive to thieves as possible is the best advice. But uh, But look, know that um, as much as you become an individual victim of car theft, it is very much part of this broader economic fabric of what's going on in the state right now. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Skylar, are there any indications about whether the amount of cars being stolen on a per capita total basis here in Colorado and in Denver, is that number increasing or de decreasing? Do you have any data for that? It certainly increased year over year from 2020, which was a record year, to 2021, which was a record year. I think very likely it might increase for 2022. I've heard estimates saying 40,000 cars uh, in 2022. So, I mean, we're talking a lot of vehicles. Uh, I would also say, look, looking at the economic headwinds, um, part of what sparked all this was the damage that COVID did to the economy. That recovery continues, but we're still staring down the barrel of perhaps another recession. Uh, when folks lose their jobs, when folks lose their homes, uh, they become more likely to turn to crime at an individual level, and it becomes more lucrative for the black market to do bad things with or to stolen cars. So um, I think uh, lawmakers, policymakers, city council people are trying to get a handle on this, but the broader economic conversation is looking bad um, for this to continue. That's interesting, Skylar, the way you labeled it to me. I, I thought that was really interesting as you labeled this as an economic crime and transparently that's not something i had really thought of a stolen car um as but you mentioned that specifically it's an economic crime and uh that's something that for me um will stick with me and perhaps for our viewers as well um i kind of want to transition to a final thought let's say your car unfortunately is stolen what are those steps those first steps that you take um and, and in order of them 
That is a very, very important question. And actually, it starts way before your car is ever stolen. Most Coloradans are underinsured for life in Colorado. We know that from an insurance industry perspective. If you have the bare minimum coverage required in Colorado, which is collision, or sorry, which is liability only coverage, you're not going to be covered if your car is stolen. You really need comprehensive coverage. A lot of Coloradans don't have it. You can't make a claim if you don't have comp coverage. So look, if you're parking outdoors regularly, if you really care about your car, even if it's a cheaper car, um, if you need your car for your daily life, get comprehensive coverage. It is better to have it and not need it than, than need it and not have it. Uh, and it's a lot cheaper to have that than it is to replace a vehicle that was stolen. Um, regardless, uh, if your vehicle is stolen, uh, call the police first, get a police report, inform them, give them all the details. Because again, the majority of these cars are recovered. Um, many are recovered damaged, uh, but many are recovered and still completely operable. So don't lose hope. Uh, get in touch with the police. And if you have the right insurance coverage, Go ahead and then let your insurer know. Uh, everybody has an interest in getting your car recovered. You because you want your car back. The police because they don't want it used to commit other crimes. And your insurer because they'd rather not pay out if you still have an operable vehicle. So the incentives are in your favor, but it does take a little homework at a time when you might be reeling um, from the shock of, of having something like this happen. So comprehensive coverage. Filed the most detailed police report as soon as possible. Um, any final things we should do? Uh, yeah, you know, um, just... Be vigilant. Um, and and I will say, to the extent this is happening in neighborhoods, you know your neighborhood better than anybody else. If something feels off, um, you know, I, I, I'm not saying go run and challenge somebody you see entering a car. Don't assume the worst. But if something just feels a little off, maybe let the police know. Um, and, and uh, you know, just, again, be vigilant. Really good advice, Skylar. I'll say transparently, I have learned a lot just by chatting with you and I hope our viewers have as well. So Skylar McKinley from AAA, um, thanks so much for joining us here today and giving us some of your valuable insight. Hopefully this helps prevent a few uh, cars from being stolen here. Yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Thanks again, Skylar. Talk to you soon.